My name's Stephen Wolfram, and I've noticed that when I talk to kids these days and they notice my name, they get very surprised because they've often used a thing called Wolfram Alpha, uh, if they're high school kids, college kids, to do their homework, to study different kinds of things in STEM areas and so on. And they have this funny look because they realize that, gosh, there's an actual person that somehow has a name that's connected to this Wolfram Alpha thing that they use all the time. And then they realize, my gosh, that means a person must have made this thing that they use all the time. And uh, that's kind of a neat thing. But uh, I've been uh, running my company, Wolfram Research, now for 32 years. Uh, we make a product called Mathematica, which is used by basically all major universities and uh, lots of other people as well. Uh, we make Wolfram Alpha, which is used uh, directly on the web by lots of people, including lots of students. It's also used inside intelligent systems like Siri and so on. And we also make a thing called Wolfram Language, which is the technology stack on which uh, Mathematica and Wolfram Alpha are based. And Wolfram Language is kind of a, a new, although we've been doing it for 30 years, approach to making computers do things that people want them to do. And so sort of the concept is to create a layer of computational intelligence that uh, can incorporate knowledge of the world and of computation um, in a way that uh, lets people uh, interact with computers at the highest possible level. So the neat thing that's happened is that this tool, Wolfram Language, that we built for the world in general and for the world's most sophisticated research and development people and software engineers and so on, turns out also to be super useful for kids. In fact, it's, it's this interesting moment of convergence when the tools that are available for kids and the tools that are available for the world's most sophisticated folk have kind of converged. Um, and so there's this great opportunity to teach kids computational thinking using Wolfram Language. What is computational thinking? My basic definition is it's finding ways to think about things clearly enough that you could explain them to an arbitrarily smart computer. Well, what we've tried to do in Wolfram Language is make that arbitrarily smart computer and make it so that we have a language which humans can communicate uh, with computers using and uh, get the computers to do what they want. So uh, the, the things that uh, we find with kids, uh, we've actually, uh, I've personally done lots of experiments. I like to actually do field work, even though I run a company with 800 people or so. And so I suppose I shouldn't be doing field work, but I like doing field work because it lets me know what's actually going on. And I've done lots of stuff with things like middle school kids, uh, showing them how to do computational thinking with, with Wolfram Language. And what gets interesting is, at first you think about, oh, computers are about, uh, I don't know, following procedures and variables and things like that. That's really not at all what the experience in Wolfram Language is, is like. It's, uh, it's something where kids can say, okay, uh, in Wolfram Language there's just something that says word list, which gives a list of all common words in English or in lots of other languages. They could pick out a random sample of those words. They could see which ones they know. They can estimate how many words they, they know altogether in English. Or they could just say, using the natural language input capabilities that we have, you know, give me a list of the capital cities in, in Europe. And then they could say, make me a plot of those. Or they could ask about their favorite movie, and we will have data about uh, all these different kinds of things that we've accumulated over the last 30 years for sort of professional uses of Wolfram language but they're now applicable to kids. Or let's say that kids are, I don't know, studying uh, the American Civil War, let's say. Um, we have curated data on sort of all the battles in the American Civil War, so kids can, can ask about those and start making plots of them and start making, if they're a little bit more sophisticated, they might make a pie chart of, you know, which state uh, had the most battles during the, the, the Civil War, those kinds of things. So sort of the, the goal is to let kids uh, have, have access to sort of the, the, the knowledge of the world and the algorithmic capabilities of the world in a way that's easy for them to understand. Um, we've put a lot of effort into automating uh, the interface to the system. That's something that's important for sort of sophisticated folk to make them more productive. It's also important for kids to make the whole thing accessible. And the good news is it seems to really work great. So one thing we've done 
for the last five or six years is have a summer camp for high school students. And actually, there are now a bunch of spin-offs of our summer camp that have started to get done as well. And it's, it's kind of a neat thing. Uh, we had like 50 kids or something, roughly, uh, come in. It's a two-week program. Um, we have a list of possible projects that actually I've typically made up. Um, and uh, then between us and the kids, they pick, each kid picks a, a, a separate original project. Then over the two-week period, they do that project. And the results are pretty spectacular, actually. We just posted the ones for this year on the web. Um, all sorts of uh, very different kinds of things, like use machine learning to tell whether something is prose or poetry. Uh, do, um, uh, remember last year there was a nice one with um, uh, looking at um, uh, two points in the, in the US and what it would take to um, fly from one to the other, never going above a certain altitude. Uh, all sorts of different kinds of, of projects um, that get done using Wolfram language. Um, it's uh, the, the whole dynamic of how one teaches with this new capability is, uh, is interesting. I think one of the, one of the outputs that um, uh, we found very valuable is what I call computational essays, which are kind of a mixture of text together with code as a way to explain things. One of the great things about computational essays, often when people write stuff in school, they just they write it, they put it away, they never look at it again. But with a computational essay about something you care about, you can get it out at any time in the future, and you can rerun that code. You can modify it. You can run it on the latest uh, uh, data that's come in from the world or, or whatever else. Um, I think that the, um, uh, the dynamic of people teaching computational thinking with, uh, with Wolfram Language is, is interesting. It's really a, a very different thing from, for example, teaching coding. Uh, coding tends to be a sort of low-level engineering-oriented activity. Computational thinking is really about thinking through uh, with clarity how one should treat a question computationally. So, you know, a typical example of a computational thinking exercise might be, and it's, it's a real one that we faced in, in building Wolfram Alpha, you're given a lat-long coordinate on the Earth, and you're supposed to make a reasonable map of what you see at that lat-long coordinate. Well, if the lat-long coordinate lands in the middle of the Pacific, you better not do a, a, a one-mile radius map. Um, if it lands in the middle of Manhattan, that might be a better idea. The question is, can you come up with, uh, uh, can you figure out what's a, a reasonable procedure to work out, you know, how big should that map be? So that's sort of a, a and I think one of the things to understand about computational thinking is um, it's, it's the thing that will drive many fields that are coming in the future. I like to say that for every field of human endeavor, X, from sort of archaeology to zoology, there either is now a computational X, or there soon will be, and it will typically be the future of that field. And the challenge now is to prepare kind of the next generation of students for all those computational X activities. And the neat thing is that we now, as a result of spending the last 30-something years uh, building it. We have a, a technology stack that makes that possible. We have all kinds of materials and programs and a book I wrote and courses and all sorts of good things to kind of uh, expose the next generation to computational thinking um, in, a, in an effective way.